Conservation authorities in Ontario learned in this fall's budget that the rules and how they operate will change. Justin Chandler covers the Hamilton-Niagara region for Ontario Hubs, and he joins us from Hamilton with more on that. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, before we talk about those changes, let's get a better understanding of how conservation authorities work in this province. Sheldon, please roll. What is a conservation authority? Conservation authorities are agencies that deliver services and programs to protect watersheds, balancing environmental and economic needs. Watersheds are areas that drain into bodies of water. Ontario is the only province or territory in Canada with conservation authorities. Governed by the Conservation Authorities Act, they are mandated to protect people and property from flooding, as well as to conserve natural resources. Ontario first created the authorities in 1946 to protect land at risk of flooding, drought, erosion, and deforestation. After Hurricane Hazel in 1954, the province also tasked conservation authorities with forecasting flood risk and ensuring safe development near waterways. Conservation authorities are either charities or non-profit organizations. There are 36 conservation authorities in Ontario. Now, Justin, the Ontario government just made changes to how conservation is governed in this province. What are they? Well, there's quite a few. Uh, one of them is a change to powers that conservation authorities currently hold. They will no longer be able to expropriate land or to issue stop work orders in significant circumstances. Uh, they will also lose citizen appointees on their boards. Currently, uh, boards are made up of councillors and uh, municipally appointed citizens, and they will no longer be on the board. And then another change will be in the way that appeals are done. Currently, appeals are handled at the Conservation Authority board level. However, now there are going to be new avenues where developers could appeal to local planning authority tribunals or all the way up to the minister in certain situations. I want to touch on one of the first points that you made about uh, exactly how much authority um, conservation authorities have. Uh, do you have an example of you know, when uh, one of those authorities would come and play in, 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 say, a construction zone or something like that? Yes, there was a case in the summer in Ancaster, actually, uh, where the, the, the HCA board chair, the Hamilton Conservation Authority mm -hmm. um, board chair, he said that there was a situation where somebody was bulldozing in their backyard uh, in a protected area. And so this was happening over the weekend, um, but staff found out and they were able to issue a stop work permit and get that stopped. So they were able to do something that uh, if these new changes go ahead, they would not be able to do in order to protect land in such an example. I'm curious, what's the response been um, from conservation authorities on, uh, on these changes? Well, Conservation Ontario, the organization that represents the 36 authorities, uh, has been very critical. And I think all the local conservation authorities that I've seen so far have been doing the same thing. Uh, they've been saying that these changes need to be rethought, that they're going to damage their ability to protect watersheds, and that they're really going to favor developers and not conservation authorities. Uh, so for the most part, I would say they're quite upset. Now, one thing that's uh, quite interesting is sort of the funding model when we talk about conservation authorities. Uh, how does it look like, for example, in Hamilton, and are there changes to that as well? Well, the funding model is actually going to stay the same. In Hamilton right now, I think the Hamilton Conservation Authority self-generates about 58% of its own funding. The province only puts forward 2%. Uh, and so what the board is saying is, well, you're not a major funder at all, so why do you get to dictate how we operate? Um, but that's because they were created as part of a provincial act. So they do have that power, despite only funding it at a very minimal level. And what's interesting in this, I believe Puss Lynch um, also only has 1% um, in terms of funding that they provide to the Conservation Authority, but they may have some power in this. Yes, this one's a bit of a head scratcher. Um, municipalities often share conservation authorities. Uh, the Hamilton Conservation Authority is somewhat unique because they have 11,000 acres of land, um, but they only share with Puss Lynch, um, I guess just sort of bordering one small area. Mm. And the way that the new rules go, um, the board chair and vice chairs will have to be shared between different municipalities. Um, but in this case, Puss Lynch only puts forth 1% of the Hamilton Conservation Authority's budget, but the proposed changes would seem to give them eternal chair or vice chair power, which is something that is sort of a head scratcher for the board, and it's not something that the ministry addressed when I asked them about it. 
Now, one thing uh, that's been clear during the pandemic is conservation areas have been in high demand. Um, I know you as well, it's you know right in your backyard where you get to kind of uh, see them and, and kind of enjoy the wilderness. Uh, tell me why other people have been um, enjoying them as well. Oh, well, it, it's just such a great way to get out uh, enjoy some fresh air. I mean, our viewers might think I'm a, a hip man about town, but during the <laughs> pandemic, the place you find me is on the trails. That's where you head out in the morning. Um, it's not too busy. It's easy to physically distance, get some fresh air and really just de-stress. I mean, you can see this is the Dundas Conservation Area and it's absolutely beautiful. Now, you had mentioned some people who are opposing these changes, but I imagine that these changes were brought in uh, by the government because they, you know, they were told some changes need to be made. Um, is there anyone that finds these changes a good idea? Uh, well, certainly the government and uh, so far some developers of what, as well have been speaking out and saying that they think that these changes will create more accountability and will make it easier to deal with conservation authorities. Uh, and the conservation authorities counter and say that this should be dealt with at the local level. And if there's, say, a developer in London or a developer in Hamilton who has a problem, then they can work that out locally, but it shouldn't be done provincially. Justin Chandler, I want to thank you so much. He is our Hamilton Niagara Hub journalist, and I might see you out on those trails one day. Oh, I look forward to it. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.